So I'm standing in front of a forest that we uh, harvested seven years ago now. And you can see the, the regrowth trees that are coming back after that harvesting event. And they'll be there for a future generation to harvest. This is a form of harvesting we call selective harvesting, where we retain trees for seed, we retain trees for their habitat value, and we retain trees for animals like koalas, um, for pygmy possums and all sorts of other creatures that live in the forest. A regrowth forest like this one behind me demonstrates how this is a renewable resource. When we harvest timber, we also regenerate the forest as well. We keep some trees for future cutting cycles and we regenerate new ones that'll grow to become mature trees and they'll be harvested by future generations. So every area we harvest, we undertake a thorough planning process where we identify areas that are important for flora and fauna protection. We identify rainforest, old growth, and other important features for animal habitat through the forest. And those are all permanently protected. We make sure we map thoroughly all the waterways and all the drainage lines where the water can concentrate. And those are also buffered from any harvesting disturbance. When we come into areas uh, of forests where there's steep country, uh, we're able to uh, map those out specifically and make sure that they're not disturbed by the harvesting. We have modern technology, LIDAR mapping, that can provide us very accurate um, information on where the ground is. Uh, the Kalang Valley is an important one for us. We have been harvesting the Kalang Valley pretty much continuously for the last 20 years uh, in this kind of selective manner. We have a fairly small footprint. Uh, by the time that we've um, harvested an area, we've only actually accessed around about 25% of the, the area that we actually manage. The rest is dedicated for conservation, for soil and water protection, and for plants and animals.